Hi everybody, here's a video to show you how to set Take Through Design Space, this new SVG to create um, a large keepsake box in the shape of a chest. Uh, this is a really lovely box. This smaller one on the right is the size at which it comes into Design Space. It makes a box which ends up about six inches cubed, about 150 centimeters, just a little bit over. Uh, so that was the one I made first to make sure the SVG would work and then when I was making the instructions and I forgot to take pictures of me adding the overlays I had to make another one just so I could show that happening and I decided to make that one a lot bigger. I really love this one. I'm going to keep this one myself on my desk. Um, some of you might recognise this. It's all, it is inspired clearly by a chest you might find uh, in a game, a game which I loved playing with my son when he was little and in fact I still play it now. Uh, I have designed all the pieces myself, I haven't taken the print or anything from anywhere, it's all been um, originated by me, this particular chest. It's not a project for beginners I don't think because whilst it's not difficult to understand, because everything has to fit together really well to make this compact cube shape, you do need to be very painstaking so if you've just started and you find that you're really good at it then you might want to have a go it's not that expensive it's only the same price as all my SVGs um, but it is quite demanding not in the not in the getting your head around it sense but in the actual technical building it it is um, you need to be very confident of putting things together and you need to work when it comes to putting the overlays on and these edge pieces you need to be able to work really cleanly with glue so you need to be used to gluing things together and not getting glue everywhere I still did occasionally and I've been doing this for quite a few years now uh, but it's as I say it's not a difficult one to understand it's just a difficult one to execute I think or it's a demanding one to execute but I do really love the box it makes I think um, this would be great as a, a birthday gift for um, anyone really who plays this game and um, likes boxes to keep things in, which it is me. I'm describing myself there. Okay, right. So let's go to Design Space and we'll have a look at it. This huge thing here. I did toy with the idea of putting parts of it in different files, but because I think this is one you might want to make a different size occasionally um, I thought it made sense to have everything come in in the one file and all these bits here that you can see on the canvas now apart from this little bit here which will be a print then cut that's the and just go back that's the latch on the front of the chest um, apart from that everything I recommend that it's cut in the same colour and ideally black. If you want to make the chest look like this, which is obviously meant to look like a particular thing, um, then I recommend that you cut all these pieces that come in in this SVG in black, apart from that, as I say, which is the latch. So it looks quite daunting. There are, gosh, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 18, 22, 24 28 32 36 pieces there it seems like a lot it's really surprisingly quick to put together when you get going it is just you need to be painstaking right so let's look at what we do so i've just brought it in and it comes in still selected as it lands on your canvas so all you're going to do is ungroup it immediately and when you do that you can see the two subgroups within what was that group you just got rid of and the top one in my SVGs is always where the lines that need converting to scores live. You can see the difference because this group here has coloured pieces in it and this group here has none. It's just lines. So you select that first group, go to your operations menu, choose score from the drop down and you can see that those lines have been converted now. They're all dashed and everything on here except the top and the bottom pieces has scores. So because there are so many sets which we can see if we open that group, we need to ungroup it. Ungroup for me is at the top of the layers panel. I'm on the desktop version for PC. If you're on the mobile app, it'll be somewhere down along the bottom. The next step is to click that other group that has all the cut pieces in it. And all we need to do there is ungroup. 
So now everything on canvas is a separate piece and we can attach the scores to just the pieces that they relate to. You've got to do that otherwise you'll get a message telling you that the project is incompatible because it's too big to cut. So the quickest way to do that I think is to click on canvas somewhere near a piece, drag a box to more or less and close it and attach which for me is at the bottom of the layers panel here. Uh, you do get, as you might imagine, a PDF of very detailed assembly instructions for this, but I would say there is a lot of repetition in it. So um, even though there are some, well, there are well over 50 steps to making this box, a lot of it is the same thing done over and over again. So um, once you've made one, you will be quite good at it and your second one might be a better result. I'm not going to pretend it's easy because if I do that, everybody will buy it and then I'll get lots of unhappy people who feel like they've wasted the money. Uh, I'm not recommending this to beginners at all. So um, I don't think there's any point in me saying what these pieces are as I do it. I can do, but um, they're all, in fact, if I can just, what could I do? Let's just hide that for a second. Hmm. What's it called? Here we go. Ah, haven't finished them yet. <laughs> That's why I can't find it there. It's still open. Yeah, these are the instructions that you get with it. This is the front page. And if I just zoom in a bit, I forget which app I'm in. I have to click to unzoom in on this one. Um, you can see that the, the front page of the instructions gives you a diagram of what everything is and it tells you exactly what piece is so that when you get onto the actual assembly instructions you understand what I'm talking about and as you can see you get pictures for every single step so it isn't difficult to understand but you really do need to be I would say definitely in intermediate at least skills in terms of assembly but if you really love it I'd say have a go why not you learn don't you by uh, demanding projects like this I think right back to design space I'm blithering a bit so I won't say what these are because the PDF of instructions tells you exactly what each piece is and you're not going to remember if I mention it here Except I could say that all those shorter walls there, they, they make the lid. And they look unusual. These four bigger bits here make the base of the chest. They look unusual because the top of every wall has that rolled top on it. If I can just go back and show you it open. Can you see? So you get that proper thick edge like you would get on a chest. Um, and if I show you inside, you can see that it's at the bottom as well and it makes it really strong. The walls themselves, in the base at least, are single. In the lid, I don't know if I've got a picture of that. Yeah, yeah. in the lid, you can see it there. And maybe, is there a better one? That's actually lined there. There's a good picture of the lid. The whole lid is lined, so the, the inner construction is hidden. But I didn't do it for the base because I thought it would take up too much of the actual storage room if I, if I cladded the you know, between that construction. I don't think it matters that you see it. I quite like it anyway. It's quite architectural, isn't it? Right, back to what we were doing. Did I attach those? I did. And that one. Yeah, these four bigger ones are the chest walls. The top and the bottom have no scores. They're just a piece that you stick on once the frame's been made. And then all these strange, long, pointy bits are the black uh, decorative edges that you saw in those photographs there. Eight of them are the same because they go around the top and bottom edge of the chest. Four of them go around the top of the base part. I think, oops a daisy, that might be a, a slightly confusing thing, remembering what base and bottom and top and... Uh, but yeah, these bits here go around the top edge of the base. Uh, these bits here go around the top edge of the lid. If you remember, it was clad all the way to the bottom and that's what these longer pieces do. Don't forget, you've got to select them all individually. I mean, you could select these smaller ones together, but then you're limiting uh, the ability Design Space has got to spread them out. I'm just going to zoom in a bit there. These tiny little bits that look like tiny beach huts, they're the vertical 
um, edges on the lid, the bits that clad those. So as you can see, there's a lot of repetition already. Even though this SVG looks quite daunting, it's not if you work through it methodically like this. I haven't done those yet. These are, what will these be if I'm talking about the lid? Yeah, these must be the pieces for the top edge of the lid. So these are the same as those other ones we've already done. Did I get everything there? I think I did. Those tiny bits there are the hinges that keep the lid on. Right, let's hit make it and I'll find out if I've attached all the scores. Oh, I haven't. I've missed some. Let's just go back. Did those, did those. They don't have any. It's one of these I've missed, I think. Nope. Definitely did those, didn't I? Yep. There we are. <laughs> These little four here, which I think are the, yeah, they're the vertical ones on the base of the box. I think I've got them all now. Yes, excellent. Right, uh, so... Every single piece of this chest, at the size it comes into design space, can be cut from A4. And in fact, even if you enlarge it quite a bit, you can still make it from A4. So just to start with, we'll choose A4. And it's telling us that to make the actual construction of the chest and the decorative black edges, you would need 10 sheets of A4, which I think is pretty good for a project like that. Let's see what happens if we choose 12 by 12. Yeah, same. So A4 or letter maybe is probably the best, the most economical cut. I cut mine actually from A3. Yeah, 10 sheets of letter. Let's see what A3 does. And of course, Design Space does its thing, doesn't it? You could probably move some of these odd pieces around. 6 A3s, that's better than 10 A, is it? No, but if you look at these on this mat, you would easily be able to move those onto their... And onto there. I'm not going to do it because it takes up too much time. But you've got loads of room on these other A3s to put those um, odd bits of edge edge trim. So you could probably end up with, I, I think, five A3s there. Yeah, which is actually the same as 10 A4s, isn't it? So you're not saving anything. But it's just what you want to choose to cut it from. What your card is. The card I used for the, the second bigger chest is A3. So I, I did mine on the long mat. But you can do it all from A4, all letter, on the standard mat. So that's good to know. Right. So that is the basic construction of the chest. But of course, if we go back and look at the photo, we've got this little latch. That is definitely got to be print then cut. And then we've got these printed overlays for the walls. Now, I personally think... When I did mine, I just put the files for the walls and the lid and the base into Publisher and I made them the right width and I printed them from there and I just trimmed them with my scalpel and a ruler because it's quicker than doing print then cut. But if you don't have another app that you can print those PNGs from at the right size, then you will have to print them through print then cut on your Cricut. So let's have a look at how you would do that. So we'll do the little latch piece first. Where's that gone? Where's the cut piece for that? It's there. So I'm going to leave everything else on the canvas as well. I just want to move it away a bit. Okay, and I'll zoom into this. And I'll show how to bring the file in from scratch for anybody who's not that confident with print then cut. So you go to upload image and browse and you would navigate to where you've got the file saved on your system. I've already been in this folder this afternoon, so uh, there's the file that I need to bring in. You would choose complex at this window. I always do. I don't know, don't really know what this means, but I always choose complex in the hope that I get the best result. At this window, there's no cleaning up to do. It's exactly as you need it, and it will cut to this shape. So simply click apply and continue. And then yes, it's a print and cut. 
these print then cut files I've supplied them at a much larger size than you need them for the chest at its design size so that if you want to make it much bigger as I did the files will still be high res enough so as you can see it's much much bigger than the the cut file piece so we're going to take the size it should be by clicking on the cut piece and it says it should be if I look up here 7.205 wide so I select the PNG we've just brought in and I type in 7.205 and then I'm just going to hit return and it automatically sets the height so now I put those together select both of them choose that center alignment so it's centered horizontally and vertically then I'm going to select that um, PNG that we've just brought in and I like to select things in the layers panel if I can because sometimes when I click on them I move them ever so slightly with my mouse and if I select it in the layers panel that can't happen and then I'm just going to send that to the back so now we can see the cut piece again and if I click on that I can open up that attachment it's closed up again like the new layers panel is doing I'm going to click on that original cut piece and I'm going to delete it and so now we can select the scores and the PNG and attach them and that's ready to go as a print then cut so now if you click make it that would be there first and obviously it's tiny so you can choose A4 or letter whatever your printer uses so that's the latch so as I said when I printed the overlays for the lids and walls if I can just zoom out a bit um, I just put them into publisher because I've got that and I can set the correct width I would take my width from this wall here because that is actually a, an unbroken wall of the box you'll understand when you see your instructions why you would pick that one um, so if you resize it take your width from whatever this wall is so if you were bringing the um, artworks in for the the walls and the top and the bottom it's the same method as we've just done for that latch upload and browse to where they're saved you get two files one which is a solid block of the wood design and that's for the top of the box and the bottom and then you get this one which has the lid overlay and the bottom part of the chest overlay together in one PNG but they do cut separately so we'll bring that one in first uh, this is another one oops what did I do there there we go complex always at this window nothing to do here as you can see there's nothing to get rid of it's already transparent just click apply and continue and then it is a print then cut there it is in your library we'll add it to the canvas and it comes in bigger than you need this is the wall that we're going to take the width from so it should be 15.504 so I'm going to select that file and make it 15.504 and hit tab and it sets the height automatically so you can see that that bit would cover that part of the wall and the top bit of that where have the lid bits gone there they are there's one of the lid walls the top part of this PNG clads that part of the wall because all the rest is rolled over to make those um, blocky edges as I showed you before right so that's the overlay for the walls and the lid walls so you'd need four of those two three four because a cube obviously has four walls just done five don't need it get rid of that one and we'll bring in the other one now which is the file that overlays the top and the bottom of the chest complex here nothing to do there just click apply and continue and then yes it's a print then cut image add to canvas and again it comes in too big and this time we're going to take our measurement from here which will actually be pretty much the same because the box is the lid is as wide as this widest wall so it's 15.501 this one so 15.501 
tab across it's the same height obviously because it's a square and we need two of those so that if i just zoom out that is the whole project for the chest in design space and all set ready to go so at this stage i would save it as a project and then you don't ever need to do any of this prep again and even if you want to resize it everything is here on canvas and you can resize it i just want to talk about these yellow triangles in the layers panel those of you who do print then cut a lot will already know that you can disregard that really if i click on it you get this message this image will print poorly for best results make it smaller or use a new image these images have been created at 29.2 centimeters wide at 300 dpi they are not low res everything that you bring in these days seems to have this warning on it you can disregard it i promise you that if you print these they will look beautiful on your desktop printer uh, they would even be good enough for litho print they're that high res um i do recommend though that you print at best quality if i just go back when i did my first one here that's the difference between printing at standard quality and then best quality and this is a it's a really nice image i created this myself in uh, illustrator but printing it at best quality gave a much nicer result i don't always have to do that with my printer because it's a good printer but i tried it on this second one and i liked the color variation much better it's much truer to the original file so that's my recommendation ignore the warning about it not being high res enough it absolutely is but when you do send it to print use the best print on your printer and you'll get that lovely rich uh, range of colors in the in the finish i think that's all i need to tell you um i hope somebody has a go at this i'm really proud of this file and i think there must be somebody in many families across this country and in fact internationally who play this game and who would love a keep box that a keepsake box that looks like this if you've got any issues at all, any questions when you come to cut or assemble this box, please don't hesitate to get in touch. The way to do that is in the description below. You can contact me on Etsy or Facebook, whichever you prefer. Don't forget you get that PDF of very detailed assembly instructions to help you. If you've just stumbled across this video and you'd like to buy the SVG, the link to do that is also in the description below. Thanks a lot. Bye.